uh, Parliamentary Under Secretary of State for DEFRA, Dr. Therese Coffey, if you'd like to come up and I will move these forward. We're absolutely delighted that you could come today. I suspect, suspect you're quite busy at the moment. There's a few things going on in government. I can't think, but you're so, you're very, very, it's very, very good to have you here. You're very, very welcome. And there will be Q&A shortly after and then uh, the Minister has to leave. Well, hello, everybody, and it's uh, my huge pleasure. Um, there is stuff going on, you're right. Um, obviously, uh, state visits, uh, leadership contest. Uh, actually, I'm also getting back because this is the day of the year when MPs come together to raise over £100,000 for Macmillan cancer by doing a tug of war. So that's uh, another example. Um, and I even stopped going to the Natural History Museum trustees' dinner to make sure that we could raise help to raise that money. Um, but I am delighted to be here, um, back again in Kew Gardens and uh, to be here on the eve of World Environment Day to celebrate the achievements of you as an environmental professionals. Now, the World Environment Day is a special reminder of how we should cherish our planet and that while we must all take action, we have to get the message out all around the world that a key factor of the environment is that it knows no boundaries. So whether it's air pollution, climate change, or biodiversity loss, and while the government, of course, engages internationally to find global solutions, we also need to lead the way in developing sustainable national and local policy to restore and enhance the environment. Now, tomorrow, the world will be considering air quality. And while in the UK, air quality has actually improved, we need to continue to improve it as we start to better understand its consequences. And this year, we hope to bring forward our new bill, which will have more powers in which to address air quality, but actually there are already lots of powers that we can use and are using to take action. But here today at Kew, we are focusing on improving biodiversity. And as part of the new Environment Bill, we will bring forward a net gain on biodiversity into the planning system, as well as build the homes and infrastructure that we all need. So who would think right here at Kew, we are rooted very firmly in urban London? I'm sure not many people living in Kew believe they are really in the heart of a big city. But while this place is renowned around the world and much cherished by Londoners and others, we must all seek out how, through a natural capital approach, we can create mini queues right across the country. Now, the net gain approach to development can help us to manage the demands on our land and resources and leave the environment in the better state for the next generation. So we are also looking at place-based approaches, as your previous speaker talked about. And here, right now, there is an opportunity for an exemplar with the Camcox Arc. Local natural capital planning in the Arc is picking up pace, and a number of government departments are supporting this work. Um, local partners are now actively engaged in the process of developing a shared natural capital evidence base and vision for the whole Arc. And this will help us to better understand and protect existing natural assets and identify the best opportunities to invest in the environment, to benefit the environment, nature itself, but also the economy and society. And we remain committed to developing an approach that ensures that development delivers wider gains for the environment that keeps biodiversity at its core. And it just so happens tomorrow I've got my second interministerial group uh, working with the Minister for Housing, also Minister for Transport, and from the Treasury on this specific issue of how we make the Camcox Environment Arc really happen. But the story happened and started before the 25-year plan, and government biodiversity offsetting pilots that established the DEFRA metric, these used habitats as a proxy for biodiversity, and these have been essential to establish a simple and consistent approach to biodiversity net gain. And since the launch of the pilots, Local authorities and developers have used the DEFRA metric to set ambitious targets for net gain through development. And industry and planning experience and the use of the metric in the following years has provided valuable information and feedback for our current policy development. And we continue to learn from practice. More recently, a number of developers such as Barclay, Barrett and Redrow, they have adopted policies on biodiversity net gain. And industry bodies from the ecological, environmental and construction sectors have come together to produce comprehensive guidance on how to achieve biodiversity net gain. And we are learning from these sector leaders and developing a clear and robust government policy to deliver enhancements that benefit people as well as provide the certainty that developers need. 
And we made a number of commitments on biodiversity net gain in the 25-year environment plan. First we, firstly, we said that planning policy must be strengthened. And the 2018 update to the national planning policy framework delivered on this commitment by making it clear that all developments should achieve net gains for biodiversity. Secondly, we promised to consult on mandating biodiversity net gain through the planning system. We've done that and we will use the forthcoming Environment Bill to legislate for such this mandatory gain. Legislation will work with the grain of existing planners policy and we've been clear that the introduction of a mandatory approach will support the mitigation hierarchy and we will keep the existing strong protections for designated wildlife habitats or irreplaceable habitats as set out in national planning policy. I think this is a, an exciting step, step, next step for biodiversity net gain and the potential benefits are huge. Enhanced habitats of wildlife delivered in the right places to create connected ecological networks as part of a nature recovery network and to have greener developments which are healthier places to live and work benefiting local communities most affected by development. And securing the right legal framework is one element and we need to continue to work with practitioners in ecology, planning and development on policy implementation. We do need a system that is simple, transparent and robust to make sure that these biodiversity gains are achieved and that the advantages for the environment, development and local communities are delivered. And we do look forward to the environmental professionals to make sure we have the right skills to make net gain assessments and outcomes are meaningful. We do need your vision to rethink the environment in planning, your expertise to deliver this successfully, and your passion to inspire a future generation of experts to keep us on track. The previous speaker actually referred to my predecessor, John Gummer, now Lord Deepen, who was Member of Parliament for Suffolk Coastal as indeed I am now and have been for the last nine years. And I have to say, six years prior to becoming the Environment Minister was a wonderful apprenticeship for learning about the balance. And I, I think balance is an important part of it because you can achieve both. The two are not mutually exclusive. But sometimes I'm very conscious that people will try and say, well, that doesn't look very beautiful, that bit of the AOMB, just because they're trying to get some development in there and trying to protect another bit uh, that only a few metres away. But nevertheless, it is that getting that balance right to make sure that we continue, as I say, to deliver homes, but importantly, to make sure that these are wonderful places to live and work and enjoy, special for the biodiversity that relies on us, but also special for the general, genuine joy that we have living on this planet today and that we must continue to do even more to make sure that future generations can too. So I want to wish you all a positive World Environment Day and best of luck to the award nominees this evening. Thank you very much.